the bling ring. So, oh, yeah. Sophia Coppola. Coppola, Coppola. I mean, honestly, that's never going to get resolved, is it? Uh, back on home territory with this kind of dreamy, woozy portrait of the vacuousness of modern celebrity obsession, based on a Vanity Fair article about effectless young Americans who his obsession with blinged up celebrities mutated into a housebreaking spree that what they discovered was that they were you know in the age of the internet they were constantly reading about these celebrities and what they were wearing and seeing the websites and then they figured out that, well we can find out where they live we'll just google it and that instantly is a subject which doesn't come up in the internship and then they just google the addresses and then they google where they are at the moment oh so and so is on uh, on location let's just go and break into their houses and it turns out that most of their security systems aren't turned on in fact in the case of the paris hilton house there is indeed a key left under the doormat and they steal a bunch of stuff and they appear to be without any connection to the real world. Not entirely surprising, considering that they are partly homeschooled. Here's a clip. Okay, this morning's lesson is on character development. So in The Secret, we talk about the law of attraction and how we need to be really careful about who we surround ourselves with because we wind up being the average of those people. So we are going to make vision boards about people who are demonstrating good character, like Angelina Jolie. So what qualities do you guys admire about Angelina Jolie? Her husband. <laughs> mm-hmm, okay. Anything else? Her hot bod. <laughs> Okay, okay, well, the hot bod is not a characteristic, but, okay. How long do we have to do this for? Well, we're going to do it until we finish, and then we're going to move on to the fluorescence work. Uh, actually, that's some of the sharpest writing in the film. For the rest of the film, you spend your time in the company of these kind of slightly disconnected, somewhat dispossessed, uh, overprivileged, and yet somehow completely, strangely isolated kids who go around breaking into people's houses and stealing all their stuff. And it's it's a strange film. In many ways, the subject matter is the kind of thing that somebody like Harmony Corinne or Larry Clark would have approached and done it in a much more leery, nasty and aggressive fashion. I mean, one thing that... Sophie is, Kev is that good or bad? No, that's a bad that's thing. A bad thing. I mean, as a director, she does have a real, uh, which, uh, what appears to be a real ear and an eye for the interaction of uh, uh, the sort of young female. If you look back to something like Virgin Suicides, or you know, even the the, the the much maligned Marie Antoinette, she does have a way of dealing with with those groups, people in a way which is very sympathetic and very engaged. Even if the characters aren't likable, you do believe in them. She has also, however, in the past drifted off, you know, you look at something like somewhere in which it is, a, you know, obviously she's somebody who's grown up amidst great celebrity part of the Coppola dynasty and therefore it's, she has a, a strange insider's and outsider's view of it. Now, occasionally for me, that tips over into just self-indulgence and you get films about people having a hard time staying in the Chateau Marmont with nothing really going on in their lives. You just think, I'm sorry, these are boring people doing boring nothings and I'm bored and I'm not interested. In the case of this, it doesn't have the narrative clarity of virgin suicides it's not quite got the poignancy of lost in translation but what it does have is an evocation of a world which you believe is genuine it's slightly compromised by the fact that for example when they're doing all the paris hilton stuff you know that that, that location has been allowed to be used so it's not like it's a, a savage indictment of the vacuousness of celebrity culture in fact very much like sort of a trope of her career she sort of takes a well, that phrase which you're not allowed to use anymore, but it is a sideways glance. It's not a sort of the savaging of Why it. Why you allowed to use it? Because it's a hideous, awful cliche. But in this particular case, it's that idea of walking alongside something. You're not attacking it. You're just looking at it in a sort of with a you know with a slightly lifted, slightly raised eyebrow. Emma Watson is absolutely brilliant. The performances are really good and convincing. You do believe in these people. It is in the end. Um, dealing with a subject which has been dealt with in much, much more sort of clear and harsher tones in other movies. You look back, for example, to King of Comedy, you know, the Martin Scorsese film, which I've always thought is his finest collaboration with Robert De Niro, because it's absolutely about, you know, if you can't be famous, be infamous, which of course is the tagline for, for, for this particular film. And it, it feels terribly lightweight and terribly effectless, but that is the world that it is portraying, terribly lightweight and terribly effectless. So it's not a film that's attacking a sort of, you know, a, a worldview which is in itself clearly vacuous and empty and decrepit. It's simply sort of portraying it. And it is doing it 
with a with a kind of engaging sympathy and she does have a a definite directorial style that you can see this kind of dreamy this kind of woozy this you know slightly just one step removed from reality and yet seeming to be real and she is very very good with her performers i still think that there's much better work to be done but this is perfectly fine and so and I, having really disliked somewhere this is a return to form